Call me a coward, I don't care. I'm now going to where the game wants me to go. I'm totally doing this for the sake of you, the viewer, because I certainly wouldn't want to confuse you guys with these late game puzzles that I probably accessed out of order, and not because this game is canning my wormhole. So what is at this target? Another worm, of course. Another worm that's hard to access because it's long. And this bridge connects. And if I go through this tunnel, Takes me to a light blue area. It's dark and Christmassy. Wait, this is very unexpected actually. I start in pots. I have to move around using these. Oh, I miss my legs. Wait, what about my wormholes? Can I use those? So I imagine I gotta keep turning and pivoting around and maybe now, oh, I just gotta turn on the lights, funny. Ah, there we go. And now the world is normal. Can I have my legs? I got candy cane legs. What a cute area. I'll start with the puzzle right here then. What revelations must I actually learn? Well, I'm a three long snake. I gotta get past this two long snake to get in the hole. I probably just gotta make a really long bridge. And maybe if I use this long hookworm as a bridge, I can get there and I can guess where it would wanna go. The most the bottom left part of the worm would go where my worm's head is. No, that wouldn't work. Actually, where would it go then? Well, I guess if I vertically flip it, I could have this work. Hold on. If I push up against the wall and socket here, I would like to flip it vertically, but it's never that easy. What if I get this silly little worm out of the way? Oh, it actually might work if I'm able to get that too long concrete pillar thing inside the worm, like where I am now. I'm actually kind of stuck. Free me. But I think the only way to physically place it exactly where I want to place it is by placing that S worm below and to the side and then Pushing this below and then over. One push up. And then I push it up again, but I'm kind of stuck now. Hold on. What if I back up a bit, push it up again, back up, push it up again. Oh, well now I could push it up from here. And then can I push it over? No, because I fall in. I'm gonna have to reset. I suppose then it might be worth a try to push it up against this block and then try to sock it from below. Because I can flip like this, then I can get out, right? Right? Reset again. The question I want to ask myself then is, why is this a worm instead of like a fence? Because obviously I can't push this worm out. Does it serve any purpose over being a fence? I just realized, can I sock this easily? Yeah, I can, but then I'm stuck. Well, I guess one thing I can do is flip this. Yeah, but if I flip it, I'm still stuck afterwards. Well, maybe I can use this long uh, worm as a hook. Let me show you what I mean. If I move this worm out of the way, I, I don't know how far. And get the big worm to be right here. If I flip it vertically, I could then push down? I can't quite push down, but maybe this is where this S-bend worm comes in, right? I sock it, I flip it, and the idea is that it fits pretty cleanly in right here. This can be pushed down, allowing me to get the tiny worm out of the way. Back these out one at a time, sock this one first, sock this second, and knock it out third. Well, that is pretty crazy. It seems no matter how I slice it, I'm in big boy puzzle land. That's one hell of a challenge. The overall goal of this worm is to go right, so I'm actually gonna just check the two rooms to the left here. Maybe they're easier. This doesn't look easier, but I'll try it anyway. Help, I'm in a worm prison. Someone let me out. I was wronged. But interesting, the theme of the world seems to be looping worms. All I gotta do is escape this prison somehow. I can't really sock it and rotate it. What can I even do? What's my motivation? Do I have to get out of the way of the giant thing? Yeah, the long worm, maybe. Because I can sock it now, but what does socking it even do for me? Well, I guess if I move more like that, I can flip. So I guess my goal is to actually flip into uh, the hole in the ground that's exactly the same shape as this. Yeah, so if I flip over right now, it would work. But how on earth would I do that? Also, I wouldn't be able to flip it the right way. Two episodes ago, I found out the ways to flip these large worms, and even if I was able to eat this worm, I wouldn't be able to flip it. What I have to ask is, what is the point of this straight worm? 
We can just place him there because he can be somewhat propped up against that wall. But I have no real faith in it, it being useful in the long term. So this here would be the location that I would need to flip into the middle. My thought is maybe the tall worm has to be a bridge for me, but what would that even accomplish? I feel that I have to restart, but I don't think I can solve this until I have a real concrete plan. Does this have any merit? I mean, I can get my worm onto the island, but it's still a little stuck. It seems like also the only way to really flip this particular worm is to have its tail that I'm not touching directly touch some other obstacle. Because it really feels like I cannot flip much. Oh, hold on. Maybe there is a way to do that flip I was talking about earlier. First, I gotta just flip once. Casually. Then I have to get the long worm into position. Which isn't quite here. But here. So that way, I can set up a flip here. And now, I have surrounded the blue square. So that means I can just push up and over. And now I'm free. Freedom! Yeah, this is tricky. Just working with ringworms. Onion rings. Large, circular worms. Almost an Ouroboros, but it isn't eating its own tail. I wonder if that'd be a mechanic. That'd be a crazy thing to do in this game. I must grow to size six, and somehow I gotta make it to those islands? Let me look at this grid. Where would I need to place this two size worm if I were to get to every island? Because, well, this might be a bait, but if I eat the worm, I'm length four, okay? So with length four plus this worm, I should be able to reach one of these islands. Then with length five and possibly plus this worm again, I can reach the other. And then with length six and then probably with or without this worm's help, I get back to the mainland. One thing I have to ask is, why the hell is this wall here? Probably so I can actually sock the worm. So, what advantage do I gain by socking? Right now, nothing. But I really don't understand the benefit of that, then. One thing I was possibly thinking was pushing it right here. But then I still don't reach the close island. If I could, like, simultaneously push it up and left from its current spot, I would. And if I drop it here, I don't make it to that island either. So I have two thoughts. Either I don't eat the pellet right away, or I've got to figure out how to sock the worm. Damn, this is one hell of a puzzle. It feels like I can do nothing right now. I don't think it improves anything if I take the uh, pellet and push that against the wall first. I can't let that fall in the water. I literally need it to win. Like, socking from here just causes a similar issue. This is the only difference... Oh, the difference is now I can roll this all the way over to here. And then this should work as a wonderful jumping off point. I'm five long now. Just got to make it back and I should be able to barely make it here. Very clever. And I'm pretty sure I can make it all the way back. I don't know why I didn't just go back to this worm. All right, clever puzzle. I, I love it when it's such a small design space. It really forces you to link up, think outside the box. Armed with the knowledge from these puzzles, I can now go back to the other room and work on this puzzle from the very beginning. So this is interesting. I just gotta get the three and two length worms into their close by holes. How hard could it really be? Hmm, I don't like being stuck. Probably because I don't have to be stuck. I'm pretty sure I just gotta sock the worm and then I can go places. Unless if this reaches, it doesn't. Yeah, so similar problem to the last one where it has to be solved presumably by socking the worm somehow and then rolling but not like that maybe if i wrap around the long way i could then roll and i could roll a little bit yeah but i still fall in same as always well i don't even know where to begin once again i'm completely and utterly stumped i can't believe this game it keeps doing this to me is it as easy as just uh Socking it here. Rolling out pretty far and then backing over. It is. It is. <laughs> Let me uh take it so I can push that over. And then... Well, it's not this easy still. Because I don't think I gotta push both these dots off. It's like, I gotta be sure I can push that over. But I think it would just make a lot more sense if I come over here manually and do it. 
Yeah, because now I can push this over normally. And now I can bridge this gap just fine, too. So yeah, it uh, was fairly easy, and I missed it. Whoops. Well, what are you going to do? At least it's done now. Ahem. At least it's done now. Ahem. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, Uh-oh. Maybe I got to keep it socked? Well, if I push both of these over, and then push that worm over, I could then fish the other food and have it be a bridge so I can roll back the three length and then still traverse as the shorter worm. There we go. Tricky, tricky, tricky. But yeah, this just is advanced sock theory. Oh, hey, this is where we're supposed to learn that you can cut worms in half. How else could I take a four worm and put it into two, two worm holes? And I imagine it's actually really easy. Oh, what the hell? So this is very much a tutorial difficulty area. I could just win like this. <laughs> that was a little wrinkle. I'm like, huh, how do I get the other two long worm there? I don't. I get there. And I'm starting to get some theories about the overworld of this area. So you notice where I threw my ring in, and then it lit up this line, and then attached this weird kind of horseshoe thing attached to the level? Look at how there's two horseshoes in close proximity to one another, and this is an octagon, which is also resembling the octagon in which I throw my ring into. So I wonder if then this would eventually open, and I could start down here and have some sort of alternate solution to the puzzle. And there could be a lot of these alternate solutions to the puzzles. Because, I mean, look, right? When I come on here, the worm always shows up on this line. My head always matches up with the circle on the ground. So I really wonder. Anyway, this is strange. Do I cut anything off here? I think I do want to cut things off. Wow, I instantly grow big. So when I cut things off, I'm going to want to be shaped... I'm going to want to be a two-length worm, and I'm going to want to be a worm that's U-shaped. But I may have to settle for N-shaped and then flip it. Oh, no, 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 I get the idea. When when I flip, I cut myself off, so it will automatically put it into place. Upside down, yes, but can this be fixed? Nope, I got to go back. I need to make the N-shape here, but then I can't rotate because of the rotating rules. New idea. I must first... Start by socking this worm, bring it up here. Because then when I flip from the top, I can make the end shape and sock and create what I want. There we go. Yeah, I love how I just kind of sequence broke and learned that mechanic in another world, but it's still satisfying to learn it here. It's good to know like what the game had in mind. And at least I can know these would be good tutorial puzzles if I didn't learn it already. I'm sure they would even be very shocking. So uh, how do I split here? That's a tough puzzle. I either gotta split myself or this other worm in two. I think it's probably easier to split the worm, other worm in two. Yeah, the more I think about it, the easier it is. One thing I gotta do though, is push one of these pellets off and then push the worm here so I can get it just lined up and ready to be sliced. I bet I gotta eat this just for my own maneuverability's sake. Yep. Because now I can come back. But I still need to rescue them. Maybe it's actually only possible with better pellet placement. Like, what if I put one pellet here? I should again reset. So I could actually push the pellets on this side. And I can do it alongside the worm itself. There we go. Now I definitely don't need to be five length. Because what I can do is push it here and I still have a place to stand on. So now when I bring the worms back, it's going to take a little bit, but I can actually push them down without them falling into the water now. There we go. I, however, am not so easily buoyant. And there we go. Hey, it's still really good puzzles. This is the level of difficulty I was actually expecting when I came to this worm ship, and not the previous puzzles earlier. Advanced sock theory was crazy, man. Oh, this is new. 